Hello everyone, I'm Ruan and welcome to week one of learning computer science in two years. If you are interested to actually see what my plan is for learning computer science in two years, I suggest going watch my first video of this series. We'll link it up below or down below or wherever it is linked, but you can find it. Um, I want to keep these updates short and sweet, so let's jump straight into it. So the very first thing we have to look at is my timesheet, right? So if you watched the other video, you would be familiar with this spreadsheet that I introduced you guys to. A couple of things. You can see that I got my 20 hours worth of work in for the week. On Monday, I started a bit slow, made up for it on Thursday. Overall, got in 20 hours. And that is for how to code simple data, the first course. And I also managed to put in eight hours of work for calculus 1a now i must say this comes to 28 hours in total which is slightly below but also i did kind of round down so if i spend like five hours and 10 minutes or something i would just put five hours so maybe in reality i actually did do 30 hours this week which is great what i'm going to change in my timesheet is i'm going to take out these x's because i don't really like that i will just be filling in the time I deleted all the pre-filled times, so you might remember from the other video, I pre-filled a lot of stuff all the way to something like core systems or somewhere. Um, I deleted all of that, but now that I kind of know what my plan is, I'm just going to continue with it, right? And you will know that I've done something on a day because I filled in the hours that I worked. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get into the first course, which is how to code simple data, and let me give you some feedback on that one. Okay, so first of all, you might have noticed there was a bit of a discrepancy in the amount of hours I put into my, my timesheet versus what is put on GitHub and also versus what is put on EDX. Let me show you quickly. So in my timesheet, I put two to three hours a week, right? This is what I put here. And technically, I should have been done already. I'm not done at all. Uh, what actually happened is there's some confusion here. If, if you look onto, if you go into GitHub and you look here, they say eight to 10 hours a week. Okay, if you go to the EDX page, they say two to three hours per week. Now this is strange. Also, if you then open the actual course that I have open here, the syllabus, you can see that they, they mention in week one, five to eight hours for, for this half, and then four to seven hours for the second half. So it's actually quite high, the amount of hours you need to do this course. It's, it's more than I anticipated by far. So already my timesheet is kind of going down the toilet, uh, but I'll update these two. I did check ahead and I don't think any other ones are like this. It's only how to code simple data and uh, how to code complex data that has this funny business going about. Now, it's very important to note that I'm not actually going to review these courses right now. I want to give a quick update and I want to mention a couple of important things just so that if you are jumping into these, you don't want to look out for and you're just a little bit better prepared. Okay, I'm going to go through a couple of points. First of all, all the graded assignments in EDX are locked, right? This is unfortunately where the it's almost free comes in, right? On EDX, not everything is free. You can do most of the coursework. You can watch all the lectures. You can see a lot of the, most of, if not all of the uh, lecture notes, I think. Um, and and you actually get access to, oh geez, problem sets, etc., etc. However, some of the things are locked. So there are graded questions in this course, which are locked. So I did not do those because I didn't feel like it's worth paying for this course to get a verified certificate or whatever. From EDX. So I skipped that part, but that does mean that I miss out on some of the things. However, this course is actually very good with extra problem sets. So there's actually quite a lot of stuff to do. They have a bunch of other problem sets with solutions. So you don't get stuck. You can always grade it yourself. They actually walk you through how to grade your own problem sets or your own program. So that's pretty cool. Secondly, if you've done a course like CS50, what you'll notice immediately is it's very different in how it's presented. CS50, which I did, you do three hours of lectures and then you get a hard problem set to struggle through. And you have to continuously reference back to the lecture notes 
other short videos that they put out to to just you know give you a little bit of an extra explainer on some topic or whatever but uh this course is way different they actually break the course down into very small little videos like two minutes some of them maybe up to five there's some 15 minute videos but generally very very short and they do actually promote coding along with the examples and the problems and that is kind of why they broke it up like this so that you can have a chance to go and look at the code yourself play with it a little bit and then jump into the next video that's kind of how they structure it but it is completely different to how cs50 typically does it and for me starting out that was a bit weird but eventually i got used to it and it actually it works quite well okay the third thing that was kind of strange is the programming language that this is taught in it's racket which is part of the list family of languages and in racket they they have like a subset of language that they just call beginning student language or something like that if i remember correctly now there's nothing wrong with it um but it isn't like one of these industry standard stuff that everybody talks about right it's not python or c or c plus plus or c sharp or java or javascript it's not one of these languages that you just know like almost layman knows those languages you don't have to be in, in computer science sometimes to know about these languages that's how popular some of them are racket first time i heard about it that is a bit of a hurdle the language is easy to pick up and the program design principles that you, that are taught in this course i believe are crucial they are actually very good uh, this is something that i missed out on cs50 almost completely they talk about program design but it's not as methodical it's not as structured as what this this program does it really breaks it down into the subsets of a program it takes you through the philosophy how to design good you know functions data to the point where you get this nice working program now i'm not there yet but i can already see kind of where they want to go with this and i believe that's going to be worth a lot so stick with it learn this new language it's not that bad of a language to know and you can still do pretty cool stuff with it it's not like you can't do nice things with it it is good and you can use it for a lot of things maybe your own project another thing about this course that's very good is their use of recursion so racket i believe does not actually support loops right uh what that means so if you've done a bit of python or, or anything else uh, you would know what loops are okay but this one no loops that means everything needs to be done with recursion and recursion is one of those fundamental methods for solving computational problems in computer science so this program doing this <laughs> you're going to be learning a lot of recursion by the time you're done with this and you get to your next programming language or course and they talk about recursion you'll know what it's about i can almost guarantee it okay and then finally i actually want to show you something fun so i was able to get all the way to the end of week four and i actually want to show you what i'm able to do now at the end of week four right so i'm going to start with week five in the next and upcoming week but let me show you this little program that i wrote from scratch for the end of week four this is like the final project or the big problem set for the end of week four okay i'm not going to go through this problem but just to skim through it quickly so you have a little program that you have to make and you make a bear spin on the screen so let me just run this so you run it by uh, if you are interested this is dr racket the ide for the programming language racket so i ran the program and then i run this command it opens a window and if i click around in this window you see how fun is this <laughs> i made a little program with spinning bears and wherever i click it adds a spinning bear and each of the bears spin on their own and i mean it looks dumb right well not that dumb maybe it looks amazing i, I kind of think it's pretty cool but it, it it took a lot right this is not you know, it's really not that simple so i'm pretty impressed with myself for writing this code obviously they 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 taught me the principles of good design etc so breaking down the problem doing it incrementally step by step that helps a lot the methodology they teach personally i think is invaluable but anyway that's my little program and uh, let's stop those bears spitting this thing will spit out yeah basically a list of bears and this was done with a ton of recursion just so you know but that's all i want to say about how to code 
simple data up to week four at least. Let's get into the next topic, which is calculus. Okay, so let's scroll down here to calculus part on the GitHub page. So for calculus, let me click you through this. You can, you can follow this link, obviously, on, on the page, and you get to MIT Open Learning Library. And they do say that you can access this course on EDX, but let me show you what that means. You might feel like you want to do it on EDX because you just did how to code on EDX or whatever else on EDX, and you would think, well, this is the obvious route to go. Let's do it on EDX. However, on EDX, it's instructor-paced, which is a bit strange to me. You'll see that it already started for me now in June 1, and it'll end in August, on the August 31st. So I did check it out. I, I went, I enrolled, and actually what that means is basically there's a bunch of stuff that's been presented that I need to catch up with to get in line with the instructor. So all of it's there, but I missed all the submission dates. Uh, not that those count because I'm not doing it in the validated or the paid version. I'm just doing the free version anyway. So yeah, okay, I kind of missed out there. And then they lock it on the 31st of August. I might not even be done by then. So for me, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not going to do that. What I did instead was I actually created an account on MIT Open Learning Library. Then I enrolled for the course on this website. As soon as I did and I opened it up, I realized, look, this is EDX. It looks the same. So you know, why not? And then it is completely self-paced. There's, it's not in structure paced at all. Everything's available from the start to the end. You can skip ahead, do whatever you like. So that's kind of cool. So I would recommend if you want to do this, just use the MIT open learning library. Let me try and get to this other page so I can just show you a little bit. So here you have it, the syllabus or the, the course on MIT Open Learning Library. You can go through all the units. It's kind of interesting how they start you out, right? So in the getting started section, I mean, go through it. Be patient, do it right. What they do here is they actually test you on your past knowledge of some mathematical principles, right? So they will test you on high school maths, and then they will test you on limits and derivatives. Based on the score you get, they will recommend different things, right? So if you, for instance, if you do poorly on the high school stuff, they would obviously recommend that you maybe go and do a bit of a refresher on your high school maths before you start with this one. Because it is, I mean, it's, it's calculus, right? University level calculus. So you need to be well prepared. Then uh, they test you on limits. And if you pass limits, not pass, if you get like 80% or above, they reckon you are still pretty good at limits or you are good at limits and you can skip unit zero. So this unit right here. And then this, the last part is a little test on derivatives. And if you do well in that one, you can actually just skip unit one entirely. So you could start this course at unit two. Now I could have done that, I guess, but I did well in limits. I didn't feel that comfortable with derivatives, right? I've done it before, but I've forgotten more than I would care to admit. So I decided to just start with unit one instead. It starts a bit slow. It starts very basic because obviously I've already done it. So maybe that's why. But near the end, I started feeling like, oh, yes, you know, lights were coming on again. And by that time, you know, I was already in it. They do give you a lot of exercises to do as you go along. So similar to uh, the how to code course, you have a little video, then you have a bunch of problems, you fill it in, uh, you get a mark or whatever. There's not really a limit to how many times you can submit, so you can keep trying. Uh, the only thing they do not include on this site is homework problems, proper homework problems, like at the end of a unit. So when I finished unit one, there was just nothing. I just went straight into unit two, which was kind of weird. Uh, then the other thing is they also don't have an exam at the end. They have this final exam preparation, but that's just a bunch of summaries of everything, all your formulas, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, nothing actually to do with any of those. So what I recommend is if you go back to the, the OSU page, you'll see they, there's an alt over here, right? You follow that one and then you get to MIT Open Courseware. Now you could do this one instead of the one I just showed, uh, but it's a bit, it's a bit more up to you, right? It's not, uh, it's not as well structured because it's not in EDX. It's not little snippets and then problems in between. It's, it's not like, like that, right? It's just, if you go through this, 
you'll see it's just all here, blah. You know, so I kind of like the way it's structured in the, the other site. Uh, so I would recommend that one. However, what I want to show on this one is right at the end of a part. So let's say you do part A and you get to the end of, let's say the train rule and you've done high derivatives, the other side, and you say, no, wait a minute, I actually want to try some problems. Oh, well, then you can just come here and you can do a problem set. They, they have the problem set all here in a PDF. They tell you what problems to do. You can do them all if, I, if you want to, I guess. And then the solutions are also there. So if you want to test yourself, if you want to see if you really understand the topic, you can just come here, you can download this sheet, you can do all the questions, and then you can mark it yourself see if you feel if you actually mastered the course right if you know calculus or the section of calculus at least and then right at the end you can also do an exam so they have review which is also quite nice and then materials for exam which is the actual exam paper and the solutions paper so that's how i would recommend going about the calculus now i'm not done with the calculus i only just started but these are some of the concerns i had that when I was looking at it and poking around, but uh, maybe you have some other idea. If you do, let me know. Okay, great. That's that's everything for week one. Uh, that's my feedback. That's how far I got. I actually didn't get that far with the calculus, to be honest. I got up to, I think, the quotient rule, uh, which is quite a bit, but still, there's a lot to do. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Also, if you want to follow these updates, if you want to follow my progress, if you want to join along in the discussion, all these things, leave comments, subscribe to all those good YouTube things that people do and ask for all the time. Uh, they will help me as well. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Cheers.